Hit your, yes, I'm recording. All right, so good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming to class. Um, we're gonna play with the back body today. Um, <clears throat> it's so important that I've been discovering uh, some things in my own body uh, that um, I was previously unaware of. So I love that, right? Right at this ripe old age, we're still discovering new things. So I want you to go ahead and get settled and then I'm gonna read something. So take your blanket and my darling, uh, who doesn't uh, go on the floor too easily if you wanna use your table or your bed, that works too. Um, so take your blanket that would normally be about this size and fold it into threes or a little bit of a burrito, right? So that it's long ways. And when you put it on your mat, ideally it just covers the, uh, the short edge of your mat. Take it below um, the top of the mat because you're gonna lay on it across the shoulder blades underneath the armpits. And I'll show you real quick and then I'll sit back up so I can read to you. So when you lay down, oh, it feels so good already. You're gonna lay over the blanket so that your armpits are on the other side. Your arms can go out in a nice soft cactus pose. You're gonna lengthen your tailbone so that your lower back feels really nice and soft. And if your head is dropping too much, in other words, if you don't have a fairly neutral a cervical spine, I want you to put a little towel or a very, very, very small pillow or blanket underneath your head. And your legs can be straight or your legs can be bent. Um, and in particular, notice the lower back, right? The lower back in the pelvis and make sure that it feels most neutral, right? I don't want a big arch in the back. I don't want this to be a back bend uh, so much as I want it to be a chest opening. And then close your eyes. <coughs> Excuse me. Start to find your breath. Just feel that really sweet inhale. And exhale. And I'm going to read something um, called Being Here by Mark Nepo. He says, transcending down into the ground of things is akin to sweeping the leaves that cover a path. There will always be more leaves. And the heart of the journey the heart of our awakening is to discover for ourselves that the leaves are not the ground and that sweeping them aside will reveal a path. And finally, to fully live, we must take the path and keep sweeping it. And I love that because it is a reminder that we can reveal the path, right, in our lives, sometimes a little bit at a time, sometimes a lot, uh, but we're always gonna be revealing, we're always gonna be discovering the next step in, in our path. So we don't wanna be discouraged if we have to sweep the leaves away, if we have to clear the cobwebs away a little bit or often, right? We know we're on this path, we're on this journey, um, and it's okay. It is the way it's meant to be. So with that, just feel what's going on in your body, right? Feel the shift in the mid-back and in the ribs as we lay on this blanket. Noticing your breath, taking a deep breath in, and as you do, Feel the breath move into the blanket, right? Feel it move back into the blanket so that we expand all the way around the ribs. And then exhale it all the way out. 
And a few more here, press into the blanket on the in-breath. And let it go. And one more. And exhale. And if your legs are straight, go ahead and bend the knees. And if this blanket just feels awful to you, either uh, change the fold so it's not as deep, or go ahead and take it out. It's okay either way. And I want you to stretch both arms overhead. Keep the hands on the floor if you can. If the hands lift off the floor, Go ahead and, and bend the elbows more. So don't overextend if the hands lift up. Find that, lengthen through your tailbone, draw the lower belly in a little bit, and see if you can find the center line of your sacrum, the center line, so that you're not tucking and you're not over tilting. Find your breath here. Now, if your shoulders are okay, I want you to reach the arms as far as they'll go. Breathe, keep the hands down. And then soften them down a little bit. Leave your left hand where it is and take the right arm up to the ceiling and down the blanket. And then do these little windshield wipers with the arms, changing the position. So one hand goes back, one hand goes down, and see if you can have them meet in the middle, right? So that you're, you're changing them in both directions about the same amount of time. So they raise up toward the ceiling, they pass each other, and they go out. Just notice how this feels in your back. Good, one more, one more. And then take both arms up to the ceiling, press the shoulder blades back down to the blanket, bend the elbows, and take your elbows to the floor. So they're like robot arms, your fingers are pointed up toward the ceiling. Remember to lengthen out through the back of the neck. And then inhale, reach the arms up toward the ceiling. Exhale, bring them down. It's almost like you're pulling a rope, right? Down from the ceiling, you're reaching up, and then you're pressing back. We're working with the back body today. Good, one more here, reach. Good, and then lift the upper arms, press down to the floor, draw the shoulders down. Your fingers are still pointing up toward the ceiling. And then bring the palms toward the floor. Not everybody's gonna be able to touch. This is an internal rotation of the shoulders. If your hands don't come to the floor, please don't make them, don't worry about it. And then inhale, the, the fingertips go toward this, or uh, come up, and then the back of the hands go down. So we're doing internal, external rotation. Just start to feel, notice if your arms are just out of the shoulders and not down too low or up too high. Again, some internal, external rotation. Couple more, I know you're feeling your back. And release, good, take the fingers up, reach them up, take the hands together, interlace those fingers, and then draw the palms, or drop, yeah, so draw the hands down to the chest, push the palms away, and reach up. And then circle back around, bring them up, and up to the sky. So the hands, the palms are coming together and then they're releasing and pressing up to the ceiling apart from each other. Good, bring it up. I know these are kind of tricky moves when you're on camera or watching Zoom instead of seeing it in person. Good, couple more right here, just working through the wrists, working through the arms, the shoulders, the chest. Good, breathe and really shake it out. Take both hands behind your head. The elbows go out to the side, lift the head, tuck the chin a little bit, and then with the support of your hands, look at your knees. So bring the head up. This should feel good after what we just did, right? So releasing some of that tension in the upper back. Feel that squeeze up, inhale here, exhale, lower down over the blanket. Inhale first. 
Exhale, squeeze. Woo. Breathe. Good. And release down. Inhale first. Exhale, squeeze it up a little bit of cold work and release. Let's do one more. We're going to hold the inhale first. Exhale, squeeze everybody. One hand reaches for one knee. You're still supporting your head. If your head or your neck are bothering you, I would stay right here. Otherwise, you're going to release the other hand to your other knee and pull that chest in. Keep the chin top. Take both hands behind your head. Untuck your chin. Lift your feet. Woo! Hello. Say good morning to your bellies, everybody. Breathe. Stay in the center of your sacrum, right? So don't flatten your lower back. Feel the belly work. Hold here if you can. Let your hands support your heavy head. Push one leg out. Woo! Come on. You can do this. I know you can. And switch. It's like you're doing a bicycle, but really slow. We won't do too many. Switch. And switch. Good. Switch. Last one. Switch. Good. Both feet back to the floor. Roll over your blanket. Let the arms softly go overhead. Turn that head side to side just a little bit. And then roll over to your right side. Roll over to your right side. The blanket is going to stay in place. Your head, you can take your head in your hand. You can be up on the elbow. Find your breath here. Bend the knees, but don't let them come 90 degrees. Let them come more about 45 degrees, right? And then keep the knees together and lift your top foot off the bottom foot. Now, the other thing you can do with your head is lower it down, okay, if that feels better. And then a couple more. Squeeze it up. Now, notice the hips, right? We're taking those hips right one stack, right on top of the other. Squeeze. When you get to that top, give a little pause, right? We don't want just motion. We want to pause. We want to feel what muscles we're working Maybe you feel it in the side waist. Maybe you feel it in the side hip or the glute. Maybe a little bit of tone with the belly. Good. Lower that foot. Use both legs. Lift both feet. Mm -hmm. And breathe. Squeeze. Three. Yep. Maybe a little flex of the foot. Four. And five. Good. Straighten the top leg. Point all your toes toward that side wall. Turn the toes down a little bit, maybe lower the head here and lift the leg and just hold for more. If the toes turn up, you're going to change the muscles we're trying to use here. What I want you to feel is this back glute, the side hip, tuck the low belly in. So draw the pubic bone into the belly button a little bit. Feel that and don't lift any higher than you need to to have this happen. Now notice, and I'm lifting my head mostly so I don't crunch my little earbud here. So press the bottom leg down into the floor Ooh, and feel your cute little hip working, right? Breathe, everybody. Belly tones in. We're not arching. We're not rounding. We are just working this little hip on that side and the glute and feeling the back body. All right, release. Woo. Doesn't that feel good when you let go? Good. I want you to press into the floor, lift up, place your hand on the back side of your or over the back side of your blanket. Feel your side body here and pull it in. And then let it sink out. Shoulder goes up to your ear. Good. Pull it in. The shoulder moves away. And draw down. So a little bit of side body work. Squeeze it in and down one more. Just squeeze it in, pull. Now, optional again, the knees are together, the feet are together, the hip rises up, working with the side body here. When we talk about core, or even if I say, hey, we're working back body, we're really working all body, right? We're really trying to find where it is. So put your top hand under your ribs and pull the ribs away from the floor. Engage that shoulder and the back body. 
and lower down everybody. Oh, beautiful. And then turn around. You can just flip around. I'm going to turn around because I don't have it back to you for that long. And come on down. Same thing. You're coming down over those ribs. Your head can be all the way down or your head can be up just a little bit. The knees bend. They're a bit diagonal down from the hip, but then they're square from knee to ankle. Keep the knees together and squeeze up. And notice when you squeeze up, are you rolling, like are you taking your whole hip forward? Try to keep the hips level. That's it, don't forget to pause at the top. Find your breath. Notice if you've gone off in la la land and you're thinking about something totally unrelated <laughs> to what you're doing here. Good, breathe and lower, let's do both feet, squeeze up. Breathe. Where did they go, right? Where did the feet go? Do you Can you lift high? Do you lift low? It does not matter, right? Doesn't matter if your feet go high or low. Let's just see what we can do to work with the side waist and the side hip. There you go. Last one here. Straighten the top leg. Turn the toes first to the side wall, the wall that's right in front of you, and then turn the toes down a little bit. Try not to let that top hip roll forward with it. Keep it lined up and then bring it up to the level that you can sustain, that you can hold. The belly draws in, the ribs soften in, the toes are pointing down. Say good morning. Now, maybe you notice one side to the other side. How does this side feel compared to the other side? Press down through the leg that's on the floor. Yeah, right? So if we ground, if we activate by pushing down, we're activating the bottom glute a little bit and the top glute. Yep, find your breath. I know you can do this, right? We just thinking about it. We're hanging out. We're doing yoga together. Breathe. Oh, and let's go. Bend that knee, everybody. All right. And then press yourself up. Your hand is on the back side of that blanket. These are the ribs we're playing with, that underside. I want you to squeeze them in. The shoulder moves away from the ear. And then let them come down. Let the shoulder come up. Good. And again, squeeze in. And let go. Good. Squeeze. What do you feel when you squeeze, right? Those obliques are working. And breathe. One more. Oops. Wrong shoulder. Squeeze it up. And then pull the ribs away. Either stay here, keep the side body working, or press into both knees, lift the hips, and feel that. So the knees are kind of stacked, one on top of the other, and try to pull this hip out of the way. The shoulders supporting me. Pull those ribs in, breathe, press it up. You can take the arm up. You can take the hand here to keep coaxing those ribs away from the floor. Watch the head, the neck, right? You don't want to look up or do something funky with your head. Big deep breath. And lower down, everybody. Well done. And then just come to a seat. Move your blanket away for now. The seat that you choose is up to you. You can go cross-legged. Your legs can be out and straight, out straight if this is bothering your knees or your hips. Remember, if those knees are really high, maybe you're up on a blanket, right, to get you up a little bit higher. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, one hand down, the other arm over. So think about this again. You played with this last week. Look at where that arm is for you. Look where your head is for you. The tendency is to drop that head down. That already doesn't feel good to me. So I'm gonna bring the ear and the arm more in alignment. The hand that's on the floor presses down to the floor to engage the back body. And then with this upper hand, I want you to pack this arm it down, work with the back body and take it up. Good, palm comes forward as we go cactus and then it turns back around. Good, couple more. Breathe. And two. And up. And last one. Good. Here's the hard part. Take it up. 
Engage your belly. See if you can let go. Press through and hold on to that imaginary beach ball. Take it up. Exhale, let go. Roll it out. If you're cross-legged, maybe you change those legs and stick the other way. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, one hand down. Engage, right? We don't want to roll the shoulder forward. We want to roll it back. Where are you putting your head in space, right? If your arm doesn't go fully straight here, maybe take it a little further away so that you're not kind of doing this, right, and stressing out the shoulder. So I want to try to engage this back arm muscle while it's up there. And then feel that, right, press away. Notice how the pose feels, stretch. And then here we go, bring it down, squeeze the elbow back, and then lift it up. Again, imagine you're pulling this rope down, right? You're reaching up and grabbing it. You're pulling it down, playing with the back, Body, the rhomboids, the middle traps, and a little bit of side body. Good. Let's do two more. Pull and then reach and pull. Hold it right here. Engage your belly. Decide for you. Lift that upper arm up. Breathe and take it all the way up. Cactus arms, everybody. Roll the shoulders. Just roll them out. And then press them out on either side of you. I want you to see if you can activate between the shoulder blades without pulling the elbows back. So the elbows are out on either side. You can turn your head and look. Are they right out from the shoulders? Yep. The fingers are straight, but they're not overreaching. They're just nice and straight. And then imagine squeezing between the shoulder blades without doing anything else with this pose. That's what I'm talking about, right? That was my new discovery of how do we activate middle back, middle back, so that we take some of the pressure off the shoulders. And then lift up really tall, twist everything to the right, let the hands come down and come into a nice, easy seated twist. Roll the left shoulder back, notice the head, right? Maybe you turn it one way and then the other way a little. Try to get some of that tension out of your neck. Ah, that's it. Good. And then let's up. You're going to start to take the head forward. Back hand reaches up, crosses elbows. Some of you are going to stay here. Some of you are going to be able to hang on to those knees or thighs, and then bend the elbows, and let's just do a big old stretch there. The head can sink down, find your breath. And then let go of the legs, your elbows are crossed, go ahead and go right to eagle arms. So eagle arms, hands can stay separate, the back of the hands can come together, or the wrists can wrap and you can touch the hands, the palms together, or you can separate the elbows. Again, what we don't want is to cause pain. We don't want to increase injury. We want to tap into the body and go, hey, how is this feeling for me? So in eagle arms, press the elbows away from me, but then draw them back and see if you can tap into that mid-back again. Release the hands. Nice job, everybody. All the way up, exhale, interlace, press up, squeeze up, exhale, let it go, shake it out. Good, let's do the other side. Inhale it up, exhale, cactus arms. Here we are, maybe you switch out the legs again, right? Um, I've been really working on sitting cross-legged in the on the non-dominant side, and I like that a lot. So now I want to think about what's the chest doing as I do this? Can I lift the chest and keep the cactus arms? Can I keep that working? Can I take some of the tension out of the upper shoulders and neck? Right? How does that feel? Now try to access mid-back. Just notice, right? What do you have to do to access the middle back muscles? to work on alignment without squeezing them back on purpose. Ooh, yeah. And then twist everything to the left. 
Let the hands come down, come into it. Take an easy seated twist. Roll the shoulders away from each other. Notice where your head and your neck is. Good, maybe look over the other shoulder and back a couple of times just to check it out. Like, oh, the stubborn neck sometimes, right? There you go. And then hold as you inhale, lift really tall. Exhale. And then release the back arm. Take it up. Cross it loose. Good. Some of you are going to stay right here. This is plenty. Some of you are going to let go a little bit, right? Because that's way too much compression. Otherwise, bend the elbows. See what happens as you kind of curl your body down and over. Watch your backs, everybody. And stretch out through the shoulders here. Keep the elbows bent. Lift those arms up. Let's come right to eagle arms. Ooh, that baby's tight on that side. I know, right? So what happens, right? I play with, when I play with eagle arms, I move these arms all over the place. I'm like, why is it so tight? What's going on here? <laughs> Right? So you want to explore. You want to feel your body. Big deep breath. Push the elbows away. And then pull them in a little bit more. It's not that I'm dropping them. I'm just drawing between the shoulder blades again. And notice that. Release the arms. Take them up. Exhale to heart. Interlace. And then interlace the other way. Press it up. Exhale, release, curl it all in and shake it out like the respiration. Straighten the legs and then bring them in towards each other. Flex the feet. Let's find Dandasana pose. The outer thighs, right? We open up those outer thighs and just pull that flesh in to make the inner groin a little bit deeper. And then kind of snuggle in and press your heels down into the floor. The knees can be bent or softly bent. Inhale, reach the arms up. And notice again, in fact, let's take the arms a little wider than usual. And then pull the shoulders up and draw them back a little bit more. Fire up the legs, fire them up. Yep, you got this. Imagine that you could engage the hamstrings, the back of the legs a little bit more. What do you gotta do there? as we stretch through the arms, as we tone in through the belly. Big deep breath. And then just let the hands float down to the floor on either side of your hips and press the hands into the floor as if you could lift up, right? Take a little weight off. If your wrists allow, take a little bit of weight off the hips. Keep the legs fired up. And release and let go and shake it out. Good job, everybody. Good kind of like let it all go. And let's come to table pose. So you're in table pose, have your blocks near the front of your mat. If you want a blanket underneath the knees, go ahead and do that. Again, we're playing with this idea, this back body idea. So come into table pose, spread your fingers. If your wrists are really bothering you, you can do soft fists. Here, just watch the wrists, right? Make sure they're strong enough to be straight up and down. And then open up the shoulders. And feel your back body again. If I do nothing, I'm kind of sway back here. I don't really feel a whole lot going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw the lower belly in. Been talking about that clock face for a while now. Draw that in and see if you can find the levelness of that clock face, that pelvis that is more neutral than tilted. Yeah. And then press your right foot back. Re-level out the hips, re-level out the pelvis, lift the leg up, and then press the ball mound back, ball mound of that foot. Everything else stays the same. I want you to see if you can find the back leg, back glute. Right? So we never just hold this. We never just hold this. So I want you to keep pressing through the leg, engage your glute, level out your hips, and then see if you can access the middle of the back. Yep, just find your breath here, everybody. This is an interesting thing. I was playing with this, and after a while, I'm like, 
wow, my butt's getting tired. Like, my glutes are feeling the work of this concentrated engagement while toning that belly in and keeping the pelvis neutral. Lower down. You can sit back for a second if you want. Take some of the pressure off your wrist. <laughs> Come on. By the way, a nice deep sigh. It's out a lot of that. So cut it off. It feels good. All right, come on back to your hands, everybody. Check the hands. Make sure they're supporting you in this pose. Press the left leg out. Level out the pelvis, tone in through the lower belly, lift the leg, and then press the ball mount back. Notice the leg that's on the floor. Try to squeeze that hip in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Breathe. And then start to really tap in. What do I have to do to really feel the glute work? What do I have to do to feel the back line of the hip? Or notice the quadricep, the front of that leg. When that leg is straight, straight, the quadricep is engaged. Can you feel that? Can you use your breath? And then see if you can access the middle of the back. Still tone it in. I know, I feel it too. Use your breath. And lower down. Yeah. Maybe press back just a little bit. Stretch it out, everybody. Always know you can come out of pose. And come on up. So my, my friend out there who's probably using her chair right now, I think I have two of them using a chair today. You can do the same thing with the chair. Your hands are on your chair, right? So take the right leg out again, squeeze up, find that, squeeze in the standing leg's hip, right? Something we never think about in balancing table. And then take the left arm out, right leg, left arm. Looking down at the mat, little bit of a curve in your, your neck, not a lot. Breathe. And now imagine that this left hand is pushing down on the table, like you're karate chopping the table. Breathe. I know. Find it. Level the hips. Hold the belly. Push through that back leg and lower it down. Good. Shake it out. I know. A lot of time on the wrist. You take a moment. Give them a little bit of break, a little bit of love. All right, last one, last size, side. <laughs> last size, here we go. Level in, left hip, right? Before you even lift that leg, you should be able to feel the glute. Think about the standing leg's hip and see if you can draw that in a little bit. Take the leg up. I'm not pressing the ball mounds back instead of the flex. You can play with either. Open the shoulders up so you're not scrunching. Find the level, find the, find the middle space. Engage your glute there. Engage the hips. Reach the right arm up. Woo! Breathe, 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 everybody. You got this. I know you do. Breathe. Keep reaching the left leg out from the hip. Yet toning the low belly in so that the hips stay level. Breathe, push down on that table, that karate chop. And lower, holy moly. Take the knees wide and sit back either in child's pose or puppy stretch if your knees don't allow. If you're using a chair, you can sit in the chair and just curl down. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> All right, come on up, everybody. Holy moly. Come back to your hands. So we're going to do, I call it quarter moon. Maybe Nia can help me out with the real name of this one. But maybe your left knee on the floor and straighten your right leg. <laughs> and before you do anything else, first I want you to look at your left knee. And see if it's more or less under your left hip. And then look at your right foot and be on the pinky side of that. Straight back 
if your left foot were pointing to it. And then kickstand your left foot out. Readjust your left hand. I always have to bring my left hand in because I tend to do a wide down dog. Push into your left hand and come to the side. Now, think about this, right? The tendency, butt goes back, belly spills forward, pelvis spills forward. I want this whole thing to be drawn up. Pubic bone to belly button, belly button to chest. The standing shoulder externally rotates to support you. And then imagine pulling this hand back isometrically just a little bit. Feel the back, feel the back body start to engage. Good, wrap the standing hip under. And if you want, lift the leg. Yep. Now, <laughs> breathe, tone the belly in, tone the ribs in, ball mound presses out, leg engages, maybe the top arm goes up, maybe you keep the foot on the floor and play there, but that standing leg's glute, keep rolling it in, keep tucking it in, find your pose, engage, Woo! and lower <laughs> down. Good, come on back, center of your mat, table pose. The right knee stays down, the left foot kicks back, and press into the pinky side. I kick stand out the right foot and roll the right hip in. Take yourself to side body and think about it for a moment, right? Again, what is your tendency? Mine is always to move through that low back. So I'm gonna draw the tailbone down, engage this glute, roll this bottom glute under, and then lift. And then press through the ball mount. And tone in, or as <laughs> we've been learning for weeks and weeks, right? Find that neutral clock face. What does that do for you? What does that change for you? and then feel the back body get strong. You got this, everybody, I know you do. You can do it. Big deep breath, and release, and let go. Woo, a lot of time on the floor today. Good, shake out your wrists. So how do we engage the back body, right? How do we get it involved? in our poses. So let's table pose to downward facing dog. I want you to pause before you get there. Open up the shoulders. A lot of you hear me always say, right? Wrap those elbows around the beach ball. Open up those arms. Feel the back body engage this time. Flip your toes under, level out your pelvis, lift the knees. Keep the knees bent as you draw your chest toward your thighs. Rewrap that beach ball and breathe. And then think about the muscles between the shoulder blades and ask them to take some of this weight, right? Ask them to engage. And then straighten the legs. Don't drop the heels. Straighten the legs. Keep a soft bend in the knees. Lift your sit bones, everybody. Re-engage the mid-back. Mid-back. See if you engage the mid-back and it takes some of the pressure out of the upper back. And then press your body away from the floor. Yeah, breathe, everybody, breathe. Soft knees still. Take your feet wide on your yoga mat. Walk your hands back on purpose. Bend your knees, the knees stay out, same direction as your feet. Take your hands to your knees, lift your head, neck, chest. Come on up, shake it all up. Grab one block. <clears throat> and place that block between your thighs. Look at your feet, nice parallel feet. The inner thighs roll in, right? Remember that Pence dispenser thing, right? If we were to pop it back, 
So we're going to roll the thighs in five. We're going to take the outer heels, outer skin of the heels, and wrap them in and see if we can access right here. I love that. It's so small. It's so tiny. But when you do it, it's almost like drawing the, the front of the feet away. At the same time, you're squeezing the block and keeping the inner groin open. And then all of a sudden, you've got muscles working that you might have forgotten you have, right? Good. Take the arms up. Exhale, cactus arms. Roll them back and feel that, right? And just notice. Drop the arms down. Woo, and bring them up. Good. One more. Drop them down. And roll them up. Notice that usually feels a whole lot better. Don't forget to squeeze your block. Take the arms out. Turn the palms up. Roll them up a little bit more and then extend out through the arms and see if you can access the triceps. Breathe, inhale, take it up. Exhale, hands to heart, let's have a seat. Have a seat, take your hands to your knees. Hold the belly in, more neutral here, right? This draws in, the tailbone can't help but go longer. Feel that, take one hand to your chest, lift. One hand to your sacrum, draw it down, sit back in your pose, squeeze your block. Take the arms up, optional. If this, taking the arms up, bothers your shoulders or neck, I would stay here, right? We wanna draw strength, we wanna find it, but we don't wanna overdo it. Now with those arms up and straight, externally rotate, in other words, the pinkies are gonna come more to the middle. It's almost like the back of your hands is gonna show. Yep, hold on, breathe. One, two, three, four, five. Stand all the way up and let go. Roll it out, take the block out. You got one more thing here, grab your strap. And you can hold your strap. If you have your unusual eight foot, you can probably fold it in half and then in half again because we don't need it long. And it's easier than having it flopping all over the place. So the first thing I want you to do is grab you behind with your palms face out and roughly shoulder width apart, okay? Roughly, you'll know. And then before you do anything else, I want you to roll the shoulders forward and just feel that. <laughs> and then squeeze them up to your ears and imagine you're gonna draw the chest through those arms. And then press straight down, straight down, straight down. Notice what you do with your head in the process, right? Is the head forward? Draw the head back. Imagine the back of your head and the back of your sacrum. See if you can find that. Draw down, press out a little, just a little. And feel that in your body, just feel that. I've been, I was playing with this earlier. And I always do it this way. And I thought, what happens if we take our hands, so let that go, put the block, the belt across your hips and turn the hands around so that the palms are face in. And then do the same thing and breathe, keep the hands neutral, like I'm not rolling in or anything, press straight down, reach back a little. What does that do? What does that change? If anything for you, what it changes for me is the shoulders are much more willing to stay back. Good, so see, draw the head. Yeah, Woo. and breathe. It's a more down than out movement, and then release. And let go and feel that. All right, that'll come back to haunt you later. So take the chair aside. Come on up to the front of your yoga mat. Inhale, reach up, everybody. Exhale, slow down all the way to the floor. Bend your knees, open up the shoulders, step back with your right leg coming into a lunge. You can use your blocks here. Don't need it, but can. If you want to drop your knee, right, drop the knee. Other ones, go ahead and keep it up. Keep your chest really close to your thigh and push through the back leg. Right, so feel the back glute, 
right? The quadricep working, the leg reaching, the torso moving out and away from that. Leave your right hand where it is. Take the left arm up, palm face in like balancing table. Woo! And breathe. Keep the front knee bent. Lift from the chest. Don't let the chest stay down or the belly um, drop. Good, that's it. And then pull it up, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. Woo! Arms up. I know. Push through the back leg. Pull the belly in, bend the back knee. Optional, watch the knees here, everybody. Breathe. Level up the pelvis. Press the leg straight. Both hands down. If the blocks are on the lowest level, you can step back downward facing dog. Engage those upper shoulders, find the middle of your back. And then look at your blocks or your mat and step forward right leg. We're back in a lunge. Engage the legs, squeeze before you even think about lifting up. Fire up the back leg. Level out the hips. That might mean for you that the right hip has to come back. Take a look at your right knee. Is it curling into the middle? Can we draw the hip back? Breathe. So push through your left leg, everybody. That back leg. Mm -hmm. Take the right arm up. Imagine your karate chopping a table. Breathe, here we go. Push off the bottom block to lift up. That's a big move, I know, I know, right? Don't overdo it, get steady. <laughs> Can always stop at the knee, nice time for me to tell you, right? Breathe, hold on to the beach ball. Straight arms, straight arms, Elaine, come on. There you go, breathe. Bend the back knee, maybe optional, please don't overdo. Exhale, take it down. Step back down with your feet up. Check it out, hang out, feel your legs, shake out your hips. Step forward, right or left leg. Always make sure when we're moving back and forward, make sure your pose is wide enough. It should be about hips width apart, right? Breathe. Now, this time, instead of, I still want you to focus on the back leg. I still want you to get that nice and fired up and feel the glute become active and level out the hips. But this time, I also want you to think about the front leg's hip. I want you to imagine that you could wrap the outside flesh down and in, right? So it just got more active. Back leg active, front leg active. Take your hands to your knee. I'll be a little nicer this time. <laughs> Pull your belly in, lift the chest part way. Push down on your knee. Get the hips to move in and back. Lift the chest more. Squeeze the belly in. Take the chest up, take the arms up. Cactus arms, don't squeeze back, but activate. Woo. Remember the front hip this time. Wrap the flesh of that side hip down and under. Breathe, exhale, hands down. I know, I know, I know. Good, down dog, everybody. When you're in down dog, Feel the middle back active and the arms, the upper shoulders, the upper deltoids externally rotate, softening those trapezius muscles a little bit. All right, last one, last side, right foot forward. Here we are. First, get the back leg going, right? And as soon as I try to activate that back glute, or the quads on that, right? The thigh muscles of that. I notice what happens because then the left hip raises up a little bit and the lower belly, the transverse abdominis, tones in. Take your hands to your knee and then think about the standing leg or this front leg hip. It's like the flesh is rolling 
In and under. In and under, yes. And then lift up. Woo! Squeeze the legs towards each other. Keep working this flesh right here. Tone in. Take it up. Smile because you are having the time of your life. Turn the palms forward. Come to cactus arms. Draw the back body. Draw the front belly. Draw the front ribs. It's like you're going to take your whole back to the wall. Breathe. And exhale, let go. Step back down, dog, everybody. Lower your knees. You can take them wide. Come on down, child's pose. Find your breath. What's so interesting to me is that when we start to refine a little more, like we play or we bring our focus a little different, what do you mean the front leg hip rolls down and under? You know, what kind of craziness is that, right? But then the whole front leg dynamic changes, and then the back leg changes, and then the pelvis changes. Very cool. It's all really cool. All right. So if you have caught your breath, come on back up to standing. So come up in your best yogi way. If you're in child's pose or sitting up, just make it feel like a yogi thing, right? Without the groaning. <laughs> I've been noticing noticing myself going Ugh, lately. <laughs> like what the heck is that? Grab your strap, everybody. If your blocks are on your mat, you can scoot them out. Little bit of balance work, okay? So if you would rather, you don't have to use your strap. If you would rather have one hand to a wall or to a chair, I'd much rather you do that than worry about the strap because you can do the same thing with your arms either way. So you're going to triple up or, or fourfold your strap again. So it's Back to that narrow setting. You're going to take it behind you and you're going to take the palms face out. No, nope, sorry, face in. Okay, so you're here. Roll the shoulders back and imagine the chest coming out from there. So draw down, be kind to yourself, don't over you. Draw down, draw out a little bit, and then find mountain pose. Right, fine mountain pose. Now, if you're pulling down so much that you feel strain up here, you're pulling down too much, <laughs> okay? So, feel that it's really about opening up the chest. Pull down, bend your left knee, I'm not mirroring here. Before you lift that leg, see this hip out here? I want you to roll that flesh in and under again, in and under. Belly tones in, the strap is going to help counterbalance. One leg up. Find your still point. Now, the standing leg, make yourself an inch taller. Use the glutes, use that outer flesh of the hips, the tensor fasciolata, right? That outer hip muscle. Push into your standing leg, push into your standing feet. And breathe. Only if you want, extend it, extend out. Yep, chest is open, hands are pressing down, slightly back to it to help balance. And <laughs> shake it out. I'm a balancer, I'm wobbling all over the place. That's what it, that's what it takes, right? Good, shake it out, everybody. Here we go. See these shoulders, right? Life it wants to do this. <laughs> we don't want it to do that. We want to press down, gentle, and then find mountain pose. If you're not comfortable with this balance, you've got a finger to a wall or a chair or a piece of furniture, right? While you play, standing leg already gets engaged. I start to peel off. I'm going to pull this hip in. I'm going to wrap this flesh under. I'm going to press back on the strap a little bit and see if I can lift and breathe. 
Imagine this body, the whole body getting taller. Find your breath. Allow yourself to wiggle. Straighten the leg optionally. Breathe, it's not about how high that leg is. And bend, and let go, shake it out. And set your strap down. And just kind of feel like, right? Is it better, is it worse? Can we move through it? And then mounting pose again, just grab one, one block. We're gonna do one more balance again. Here, wall, it's absolutely perfect and wonderful. So take the block, think about this for a second, to the outside of your left foot. Outside of your left foot. Roll up, roll back. Hands to hips. You know, all know about the Superman pose, right? The superwoman pose. Breathe. Right, we help with our confidence and our sense of self like esteem. This is the superwoman pose, superman pose. So you're gonna soften the left leg and you're gonna step the right foot over and you're gonna land on your block. And then this little hip right here, right? And it in there, get it in there so that the leg feels more straight. And I love this idea that the outer glute can wrap under, right? Kind of almost join the hamstrings in supporting the straight leg pose, straight-ish leg pose. One, you're gonna stay right here. The arms are gonna go out, your left arm on top of your right, and you're gonna do a little supported eagle pose, okay? I love this version for just playing. And then if you wanna play, you can just lift the foot and drop it. If you would rather, you gotta bend the back knee. The knees cross, and then you can either lift or wrap. Print your balance, Woo. and then do the elbows. Eagle pose, maybe you sit down a little bit. Belly tones in, elbow drops, breathe. and then release. Ooh, shake it out. <laughs> Block goes to the other side. It's on the outside of the right foot. Once again, right? All poses start with mountain pose. We lift up out of the sky. We get that much taller. Soften the knees and just take the left toes to the block. If you're here and playing the back knee bends, right? The hips are level, and then we do the arms, right arm above left. I love this version. <laughs> or you squat, you wrap the thighs more. You see if you can flip those toes behind. And you wrap, whoop, gravity. You wrap the arms and you find your pose. Everybody breathe. And release, shake it out. Just give that block a little kick in front of you. Take your feet wide on your mat. Big deep hinge from the hips. I want you to draw the inner thighs way back. Come on down, forward fold. Either your hands are gonna to come to the block so that you can stay more neutral or you can move the block out of the way. Walk the fingertips forward. Parallel your feet or slightly pigeon toe them. And then imagine that your fingertips are gonna pull back. Pretty hard, I mean, you know, a good 30, 40%. And feel the back body again, the head, neck, upper shoulders should feel pretty good here, they're not working. Instead, we're trying to move into the, the latissimus dorsi, the back body muscles, and the middle shoulder blades. Breathe. You got it. 
And then let all that go and come into your normal forward fold. Use your breath. Press into your hands, everybody. Heel toe in. Bend the knees. Hands come to your knees. Come on up. Woo. Grab your block. Just take it between the knees. Walk the feet in. Squeeze your block. And stand up. That's it. Good. Release. We're coming down to the floor, but we've got a few things to do along the way. So come on up to the front of your mat. Take the block out. <laughs> or waddle up. <laughs> Inhale, take it up. Exhale, forward fold, soft knees. Step back to downward facing dog, everybody. Down dog. Again, right? Find the middle space of the back. This is starting to take the pressure off of my neck and upper traps. As I keep playing with where's the middle of the back, the middle of the shoulder blades, instead of always being up in the traps, up in the upper traps. All right, inhale your tippy toes, lower your knees to the floor. Ooh. And release for a second because we need our blanket again. You're gonna take your blanket and put it long ways this time. You know, a foot or so from the top edge of your mat. Put this stuff out of the way. And you're going to lay on your blanket. Now I'm going to move mine kind of to the edge just so I don't have to flip over for the other side. You're going to lay on your blanket so that your pubic bone is on your blanket, right? That hard, bony, Cubic bone is on your blanket. Now, you might have a block for your forehead. You might not. Okay, we're going to use, uh, we're going to have a neutral uh, spine for just a little bit. So either your forehead rests on your block or you can take your head down to the floor. It depends on how much your head drops. So if you've got your head on the, the block, and I'm doing that more for talking than anything, I want you to feel, like poke up your butt for a second, poke it up, and then on purpose, draw it down and draw the tailbone down and press down into the bottom edge of your pubic bone. Yep. And then flip your toes under both of them, both feet, Press down through the pubic bone, but then press up through the back legs. So the legs are straight. Legs are straight. The inner angles head toward each other just so you don't go splaying out to the side. The glutes just became active. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, good, good. Press into your right foot, lift your left leg a little bit, point your toes. Feel your glutes, the back of the leg, leg as straight as you can for you without hyperextending. And then reach your right arm out, lift your right arm, turn the pinky side down or the palm in, and then lift your head off your block. And breathe. Now, any low back stuff, lower the leg more. Right? If you're feeling your SI joints or your low back, don't lift so high. Just breathe. And lower everything down. Shake it out. Flip all your toes under. Lengthen through your lower back. The low belly tones in. The left foot stays down. The right foot lifts. Point the toes. Feel your back leg. Stay level on the blanket. Reach the left hand out. Turn the pinky side down. Lift the arm, lift the head, lift the neck. Don't overlift the head. Feel the difference, right? If your left arm is reaching and your right leg is reaching, feel what's going on in your back. Oh, 
How can you not, right? And lower everything down, shake it out. Move the block out of the way if you're using it. And put your forehead on your hands. Your elbows are out to the side. Your pubic bone presses down. The legs got active, lift your knees off the floor. Knees off the floor, you're on the tops of your feet. Lift one leg, hold, and lower. Lift the other leg, hold, and lower. See if you can lift both legs. If you're not on your blanket quite right, this will be much harder. You might have to shift up or down a little bit. Don't overdo, don't overlift. And lower, shake it up. Take the arms to cactus pose. Forehead to the floor. Catch your breath. Lift your left bent arm to the level of your shoulder and take your head with it. So I'm just looking toward the front of my mat. Find that middle back. Lift your right leg, opposite leg. Left arm, right leg. Breathe. And lower. We're almost done here. Hang on. Other side, right arm. Take the head so that the head's not hanging forward of the shoulder. Level it out. Lift the left leg. Breathe. Lower. Find your breath. Take both hands under your forehead again. Press strongly down into your pubic bone. Lift your head to keep it glued to your hands. Lift the legs. Five, four, three, two, one. Lower down. Nice job, everybody. Shake it out. We're almost done with this. I want you to roll to your side and take the blanket out. You're probably really happy about that. <laughs> and then come on down your belly again for a moment. Just shake it out. Now, locust pose, right? We've basically been doing a bazillion variations of that with the blanket in place. So think about this for a second. Lengthen through the tailbone and find the lower edge of your pubic bone, right? So already that takes some of the weight and pressure off the lower back. And then imagine that that pubic bone is going to reach up toward the belly button. So you get a nice little curve there of your or a tuck of the spine. If I just lift the legs and keep the forehead down, I want to see where can I lift without pain and then lower down. Take the hands beside you and take the palms up. Think about what we just did with the strap. So the first thing I want you to do is lengthen the tailbone, tuck the pubic bone up toward the belly button, pull the shoulders away from the floor, lift your head, maybe lift the legs. From here, lift the arms, but imagine you're pulling down with the strap and slightly back and breathe. Locust pose, version number one. There's a zillion ways to do this in my mind. And lower down and shake it out. We'll release this little back in just a second. We got one more. This time, I want you to take the palms face down. Pull the shoulders back, lengthen the arms, lift the legs, push the hands into the floor. Yeah, right? Woo, breathe. From here, draw the front of the neck back a little bit and lift the arms and breathe. Five, four, three, two, one, lower down. Ooh, shake out the hips, everybody. Bend your knees, windshield wiper your hips. That's it. 
and then roll over to one side. Oh my goodness. Where's the time gone? Roll onto your back. No, I want more to <laughs> Come onto your backs with your knees bent. And tilt and tuck your pelvis. Just tilt and tuck. All right, we'll have to save some of the other stuff for next time. Tilt and tuck. Good, couple more. Find the center line of your pelvis, bring your right knee to your chest, wrap your fingers around the front of the knee. We've done this a zillion times over the last five, six weeks. Push the knee away from you, straighten the left leg and breathe. Push the right knee away, level out your pelvis, feel the center of your seat. Optionally, lift your left leg a couple of inches. Breathe. Lower the left leg. Bring the right knee deep into your chest and straighten that leg. Bend both knees. Both feet to the floor. Left knee comes in. Wrap your fingers around that knee. Push that knee away from you. Try to keep the shoulders more or less down, though, even though you're pushing the arms straight. Straighten the right leg. Feel the hips. Find your breath. Lift the right leg a couple of inches. This is this has become a lot of my go-to to settle things down after I'm done. Lower the leg, bring the left knee in and straighten. Bend both knees. Shift your hips to the left edge of your mat. Bring the knees to chest and lower the legs to the right. Now, if you if your knees don't come easily to it, we've been doing that for a little bit too. The block goes underneath the knees so that you can open up the back body. Arms come to cactus or they fully spread out to T position. And breathe. Soften the jaw. Find your breath. Make this twist less work, less work. And then raise one knee up, raise the other knee up, press your hips, hips back to the center, and then lift and bring them to the right edge of your mat, draw the knees up toward your chest, lower your knees to the left, find your twist on the side, we're gonna run a few minutes over. So for those of you who really need to leave, um, just keep that in mind. Ideally, you'll stay with me till we're done. And then make the twist a little less work. Don't work so hard. If your opposite arm, in this case, the right arm, if it's really kind of hanging off the shoulder, take that arm down and let your hand rest on your waist. Like don't overstress the joints. Find your breath. And then take one knee up. Take the other knee up. Bring your hips back to center. Draw both knees to chest. Hold on to the tops of both knees. Push them both away. Bring them both back in. And then straighten one to one corner of your mat. The other to the other corner of your mat. Broaden through the back of the shoulders. Turn your palms up and find your own beautiful Shavasana.
and notice how you feel. Feel free to use your blanket or your box to help with your Shavasana. And as we move into our Shavasana, think about the path. And think about sweeping away the leaves in order to reveal that path. And know in your heart that you are willing to see the path, to acknowledge it, and to move forward. Your step is light, your heart is light, your path is there. Soften and let go. Let your breath be soft. Your mind free. Soften down even more. Then imagine a small ripple starting at your toes. And that ripple feels like a smile in your body. And it works its way from your toes to your feet, to the legs, to the hips, as if gaining steam, filling your body with this joy. And then it moves up to your heart, to the shoulders, to the neck, and all the way to your face. Breathe that in, bend your knees, start to draw your knees toward your chest. Hold the knees in and rock side to side, maybe a few knee circles, just to smooth all that out. And then allow the knees to roll over to one side. Curl over to fetal pose. Pause and let that smile 
move from the inside to the outside. And then press all the way up. Find your seated pose. Let your hands come to your heart, everybody. Bow to your own inner wisdom and the guidance that keeps you on that path. Namaste. Mm -hmm. Namaste. Thank you, everybody.